Hey YouTube, Dan from South Arc Computing, and today we're going to be setting up a private Minecraft server version 1.86 on a Windows desktop. We're also going to go over um, what you need to do to get your server available on the internet so your friends can play. So first off, we're going to open up our favorite web browser and head over to Minecraft.net, which I've already done here. Next on that first screen, we're going to go to already bought the game, download it here. So we click on that. We'll need two things here. We'll need the actual Windows version of the game and oh, we're going to click on save for that one and as well as the server and save for that. With my particular web browser here, it downloads everything to the downloads folders, which is in my profile and downloads. We're going to move these files to my desktop. I want to make a directory for my Minecraft server. so. I'm going to right click with my mouse, go to new, and say folder. And this one we're just going to call it mind. Oops, if I could type today. Yeah. Minecraft. And I'm going to drop the Minecraft server into that folder. Next, inside the folder, I'm going to run this exe file. It's going to prompt you, are you sure you want to run it? I'm going to say run, but I'm also going to uncheck this because I don't need it verifying it every single time. Now if you run into this error where it says it requires a Java runtime environment, you need to head over back to your web browser and go to java.com and click on free Java download. Once there, you're going to click on this big red button, say agree, and start a free download. And save once again. So now I'm going to head back over to my downloads folder and run that Java installer. Just be patient, it'll take a little while for the Java setup window to come up. Once you have successfully installed Java, you'll be prompted with this screen here. So let's close it and head back to our Minecraft server. Oh, and of course you'll get a confirmation page here verifying that your Java was installed correctly. So let's head back to our Minecraft folder and try to run the server exe again. So what you need to do next is modify this text document, the eula.txt. So I'm going to say edit. Oh, it's important to note here that you may not have file extensions turned on. You might just see EULA, and that's fine as well. Just right-click on that and say Edit. Next, we're going to go over here where it says the word false and change it to true. Now, it's important to note that you keep it all lowercase here. We're going to go to File, Save, and then we're going to close the window. So once again, we're going to launch the server app so it can finish creating all of its configuration files. So let's go ahead and double click. Now this is very important here. Obviously we want this to work with the firewall here. So we're going to say allow access and it's referring to the Java portion of this application. And we're going to give this about 10 seconds. So once your server has been running for at least a good 10 seconds, we're going to type in the word stop and hit enter. Now this may or may not work. If you really have to after 30 seconds, it's all dependent on how quick your machine is. You could close the box. It's not the recommended method, but it works. Now next up, you have to edit the server properties file here. We do that by right clicking and saying open. Now, right off the bat, it doesn't know what to open this application with, so we're going to say select a program from installed program list, and we're going to do notepad again. As I stated before, you may or may not have file extensions turned on by default in your operating system, so the file name might just be server, not server.properties. Now that we have the screen open, we need to find out our computer's local IP address. We do it by holding down the Windows key on our keyboard and then pressing the R key. And then this window, we're going to type in the command CMD, which was already there, and then saying OK. Another dialog box is going to come up and you're going to type in the command IPCONFIG. 
from here, we're going to need the IPv4 address, which is this guy right here. So I'm going to type it in right here. 192.168.1.144. Next, we're going to go to File and then Save. Don't close this window just yet. We're not done with it. Next, we need to configure our router so that it's available through the internet. But first, let's grab the server port number right here by highlighting it and doing a edit copy. Now, how do you get into your router? Well, nine times out of 10, it's the gateway right here. So we're gonna enter this IP address into our web browser. I'm gonna do a new tab here, 192.168.1.1. Now I've already entered the password here for my router. If you don't know what your default password is for yours, you can head over to routerpasswords.com and they have an entire database of every, almost every single router you could possibly imagine and its default password. But since I already have mine, I'm gonna head over to gaming and applications and single port forwarding. Now that number that we copied before for that port we're going to paste it into both of these fields here. For protocol, we're going to do both as well. And if we remembered that IP address that we got from before for this particular computer, here we go, it was 192.168.1.144. Now, don't put that into your computer because that will only work in this particular example. So, we're going to do 144. Over here, we're going to give this service name Minecraft. And very important here, you got to check enable, scroll down, and save settings. It's very important to make sure you clicked enabled for that particular line and clicked on save settings. So now this means your friends could actually join your private Minecraft server through the router. Now, the last thing you need to do is find out what is your public IP address on the internet. That can be found out fairly easily. We're going to get, head over to google.com. We're going to type in my IP address. And your IP address is going to show up in this window here. Now, I blocked it out so you can't see it. But everyone's is going to be different. And this is the number that you're going to give to your friends in order to connect to your Minecraft server. Finally, you're going to run the Minecraft server 1.86 EXE for the final time. Now that our server is running, we can actually go back to our Minecraft installer that we grabbed before. And this is going to install the actual GUI for the game for us. Once the installer is finished, you could go ahead and close it. Okay, so now that the launcher is up, we're going to click on play. Next, we're going to click on multiplayer. If you get another Windows firewall blocked some features, you want to allow this access again. And you could just do a direct connect. And here it's going to be 192.168.1.144, I believe it was. Yep. And say join server. And there you have it, you successfully connected to your own Minecraft server. If you want your friends to connect, you have to give them that IP address that you got when we did a Google search for my IP address in this box right over here. And that pretty much wraps it all up here. As always, if you like what you see, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and even leave a comment, it would be greatly appreciated. This is Dan from Southhawk Computing, and as always, until the next time.